Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this segment of The Mob. Now, I'm not talking about criminal activity. We're talking about masters of business. Now, before I do begin with the presentation, which will be talking about 10 steps to grow your business with LinkedIn, I want you guys to ask yourself a question. Are you a B2B business? Are you a business that supplies products and services to other businesses? Or are you a business to consumer business or a B2C business where you have products or services that are designed for the general public? The reason why I ask this question is because there's fundamental differences on how you need to market yourself, especially on digital, especially on social media, if you're a B2B business compared to if you're a B2C business. Now, let's have a look at a well-known brand that's a B2C business, a business to consumer. Let's have a look at an Apple iPhone, for example. Now, when you buy an Apple iPhone, you don't necessarily have to build a strong human relationship. Right? Well, in fact, a lot of you may have even purchased an iPhone or a product, consumer product, online using a credit card with no human interaction. Yeah? So B2C businesses don't always require or traditionally don't require a lot of human interaction or strong relationship building. But now let's look at the flip side. Let's look at B2B businesses. Now, when you're talking B2B, the more complex and the more uh, expensive, I suppose, your solution becomes for the other business, it always requires human inter interaction. It always requires strong business relationships to win and nurture that. So the mistake that I see a lot of B2B organizations making, or the mistake that a lot of uh, B2C uh, businesses uh, that I see you know, when, they're, when they're trying to reach out to a business audience, is that they focus all their time and attention and money and resources on purely focusing on the company brand or the company's products and services. And, but if it requires, if, if we're talking business to business and it requires human relationships, then it only makes sense to actually spend a bit of that time, effort, and resources in promoting the people within your organization or personal branding, yeah? Being recognized as a thought leader or advisor. So I'm gonna talk a little, something a little bit different than you might have heard around social media marketing. I'm gonna tell you how to use social media to generate more offline opportunities. And this is the 10 steps that I'm gonna show you on how to do it. My name is Jeff Yang, and I'm the founder and director of a company called Social Gen. Social Gen works with multi-global organizations across the world. So we work with Hewlett Packard, we work with Google, we work with IBM, we work with AMP, and we help them to identify ambassadors within their organizations using social media, create them as thought leaders and advocates, help them to find and reach out to their ideal target audiences, engage them and educate them and add value through using content through these social channels, but most importantly, then how to move that relationship outside of the social media network so you can have a real commercial conversation and you can measure how much money you're actually making from all the time, effort, and resources you're putting into your current social media campaigns. Now, how many of you are actually happy with the results that you're getting from your social media marketing? If you're not happy, then pay close attention to this presentation. So let's get into it. The concept that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about or that you're gonna be learning about is something called social selling. Now, social selling is primarily how to use social media for the B2B sector. Now, if you're a B2C business, business to consumer, you might be going, hey, Jeff, this presentation doesn't apply to me because my products and services are for consumer. But that's not the case. Think outside the box a little bit, right? Think about creating partnerships, joint venture opportunities, yeah? These are still where you would need to promote your personal brand, reach out and connect to other entrepreneurs, other businesses. And hey, if you, can, if you can create a partnership with a business that has 
many of your ideal target audiences in there, it means you only have to manage one relationship to be able to access a lot of your, your customers. Yeah? So even though you are a B2C organization, this method of marketing, this method of promoting your personal brand, this method of growing a business would still apply to you. Yeah? And whether you're B2B or B2C, if you're looking for PR opportunities, then LinkedIn is a wonderful network, a professional network, that can help you connect to journalists and publications as well. Excellent. Well, let's get started. So why, why LinkedIn? You know, why use social media at all to grow your business? Well, it's because the internet, mobile devices, digital, has completely changed the way our consumers buy these days. Right, 71%, this is, this is research done, 71% of buyers, especially in B2B, will start their research or start their purchasing decision online. Yeah? So that's a huge audience that are looking for your products and services, but are going to online first to, to research their purchasing behavior. 57% of the buying process is done before they even speak to you, right? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be talking to someone after they've made up most of their purchasing decision. I want to be influencing them from 0%, 10%, 20%, not at 57%, not when they've made up half of their decision uh, before they even speak to me. Because the repercussions of that Yes, I might be shortlisted, but the repercussions of that is then I'm competing with my competitors on price, not on value. So it's important that as, as modern day you know, businesses and business owners, we look at ways to be able to influence our, uh, our buyers and add value at the very beginning of their purchasing process. Now, a lot of you who have had a bit of sales background will recognize this funnel. You know, we're told, and you'll have sales experts telling you that this is the set out process of buying behavior. You know, awareness, opinion, blah, blah, blah. But in actual fact, research shows that it looks more like that. Yeah? More complex with the addition of internet, with the addition of mobile, with the addition of digital. You know, there's, there's so many different access points now where your consumers can learn about your products or services themselves. Reach out to peers or other people that have used your types of products or services in order to help educate and influence them. So it now shows that you have to be in multiple areas at one time to be able to properly influence your consumer's behavior. The other key factor is that, especially if you're, if you're dealing with larger, mid-size or larger organizations, definitely the, the organizations that uh, our agency works with, 55% of those uh, organizations have more than one decision maker. Yeah, they're one to three. So it's, it's no longer enough just to connect with the business owner. It's no longer enough just to influence one person in a lot of these organizations. You actually have to look at connecting to multiple people, people who influence, people who, are, who do make those decisions within an organization. And 37% actually had more than five. Yeah. So this is why digital, this is why social is becoming so much more imperative and important because it allows you to reach out and influence all those key decision makers, all those key influencers at the same time. Hope that makes sense. So the evidence for social or the evidence of social selling is, is clear. And the, the thing that I want to, the, the, the point on this slide that I want to focus on is the one done by Harvard Business Review. 90% of business owners do not respond to cold outreach anymore. Yep. So if you're still using traditional methods of marketing, emails, events, cold calling, that art form, that type of marketing is becoming extinct because it doesn't work anymore or it's dwindling. The other one is the one at the end where it talks about 74% of the, 
of buyers. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.